You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. And now it's time for another edition of the 12th Man Fan Jam with your host, the Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Magic Voice. This is the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. And welcome, one and all, to a very special Playoff Panther edition of the 12th Man Fan Jam, the show made up of Seahawk fans from around the world talking about your NFC Western Division champion, Seattle Seahawks. Over the next few moments, we share together. We hope that you are entertained and you are enlightened as we discuss your NFC Western Division champion Seattle Seahawks as they step up to face the Carolina Panthers in the first round of the playoffs for them. So sit back, relax, grab a desired beverage or scent of your choice. And remember, Panther, no Panth, is the playoff, baby. As is the usual with every show, we are not alone. No, we are joined like we are every episode by the 12th Man Fan Jam Posse, a ragtag group of diehard Seahawk fans from around the world. First, my partner in crime, the ying to my yang. He's a Bad kitty sometimes, and not a big fan of puss from merry old England, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hello. Good morning, Moses. How are you? I'm wonderful, Matt. How are you this morning? Well, I do bring good news and bad. Oh, you always do. What is the good news? The good news is we are playing a playoff game this weekend. Yay! What's the bad news? It's not going to be the Detroit Lions, and it's not going to be Golden Tate. (laughs) How we miss him already. I just want to see him get laid out by Cam Chancellor. That's all I wanted to see. I do too, but you know, you have to lay off of Golden Tate because we, we were a little hard on him this weekend, apparently, on his Twitter. He was very sad. Aww. I know, poor guy. Sensitive soul. I know, such a sensitive man. Speaking of sensitive, next, very sensitive from the state of Washington. Our, his 12th man editorials can be found on SeahawksSouth.com. He is our 12th man fan jam news hound and always has the perfect headlines. He loves cats, except this week. He's Shadowhawk Will. Hi, Will. Hey, Moses. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? Doing well, although a bit of a divided household. I'm cheering for Seattle this weekend, and the cat is cheering for Carolina. So oh, bad things kitty. Things could get ugly. Bad kitty. We'll have to teach that kitty a lesson later. Bad kitty. Uh, n- next, uh, tailgater extraordinary. He is large and in charge. He never gets cat scratch fever. He is Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hey, what's going on? Oh, not I, much. Uh, can't wait to get up there tomorrow. I'm heading up there. I'm going to be in Seattle probably about 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, start tailgating all the way up till game time. Ah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Beautiful. And, and and we wish we were there to join you, I'm sure. It's going to be an amazing, amazing experience. experience. Well, listen, here we are. We're the playoffs. And we've done our intros. We want to get to this show. We want to talk about the playoffs. We want to talk about the Seahawks. We want to talk about the Panthers. But before we do, let's tell you how the show is run. For those who've listened before, thank you for joining us again. For those who are listening for the first time, don't worry. We will be gentle. But be careful. If you're a bad kitty, you get the spray bottle. So here's how the show is run. First quarter will be news. Our news hound, uh, Shadowhawk Will. We'll catch us up on all the news in the NFL that we may have missed this week. Uh, Court two, we'll do our predictions from last week. We had those two N- uh, NFC playoff games. We made predictions. We'll go through those real quick. A two-minute warning right before halftime. We will do a special return edition of Headlines and Punchlines. I think you'll enjoy. And at halftime, another return comes. The return of the 12-man fan jam halftime trivia. Yes, playoff and panther edition of the 12th man fan jam halftime trivia i believe mark who is not with us this evening uh who is a usual member of our posse uh he he he's a champion from the last time we had trivia so it is up for grabs with all these fine gentlemen here uh quarter three we'll talk about of course the playoff game between your seattle seahawks and carolina panthers and then we finish up the show fourth quarter we do our predictions our prognostications and our game balls but before we start all that we'd like to remind you we'd like you to like share subscribe to the seahawk positivity youtube channel or contact us on this thread or on the comment section of this video for feedback email us at 12th man fan jam at gmail.com tell us what you think and also we'd like you to look for the 12th man fan jam show facebook group and join us won't you Hey, before we get started, let's do some shout outs. Hey, uh, can I do a shout out? Shout out. Shout out. Uh, shout out. Shout out. Yeah, we got some shout outs this week. Uh, first, some birthday shout outs. 
uh, two members of the posse this week had birthdays, and that is uh, uh, Will and Dustin. Congratulations. Happy birthday to you both. Happy birthday, Thank fellas. You. Thank, Thank you, you, sirs. Yes, you each had a birthday, and we uh, record this on Friday evening, and they had their birthdays earlier in the week. But today, which is Friday evening, my wife, Mrs. Moses, had her birthday today. So I say happy 21st birthday to my wife. No, I'm, yeah. Oh. Uh, that's your present. And some though. months. Yeah, yeah. A, a couple. <laughs> and also, um, we have Mama Blue's birthday today. And, and Mama Blue is a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, I'm not going to say how old she is because that is just terrible, terrible manners. I'm going to say she's 23. So happy 23rd birthday to Mama Blue uh, for sure. Class act person. Without a doubt. So, before we do our, we had our birthdays, we also want to go to uh, shout out to Tom Lucas. Tom uh, wrote us about last week's show. Last week we talk, called something called the B. Walt Experience, or uh, Brian Walters, our punt returner. Uh, Dustin shared with what the B. Walt Experience would be. And Mr. Lucas wrote us and said, listening to you talking about being disappointed in Brian Walters, if you look at his stats, he's eighth in the NFL in returns. And I'll take a top 10 guy any day of the week. Now, we've had a very spirited spirited and great discussion on this subject with him on the 12th Man Fan Jam Show Facebook group. So if you'd like to join us for that and many other goodies, I might throw up a few behind-the-scenes outtakes up there soon. Uh, I might throw up some pictures and stuff like that. Go to Facebook and go to the 12th Man Fan Jam Show Facebook group and please ask to join that group. Hey, have you voted for the second annual 12th Man Fan Jam Award Shows coming up, the Jammies? Well, why not? The nominees, Seahawk Offensive Player of the Year, Seahawk Defensive Player of the Year, Seahawk Touchdown of the Year, Seahawk Game of the Year. Stop by the 12th Man Fan Jam Show Facebook page and vote. Contact us on this thread or comments. Email us at 12th Man Fan Jam, gmail mail, gmail.com, not gmail.mail. And let us know who you think deserves an award. We're going to close the ballowing next sun- Sunday, January 18th, because the bye week between the championship and the Super Bowl is where we're probably going to have our halftime awards show. So get ready for that. Wow. Okay, that's the whole show. Good night, everybody. No, I'm kidding. All <laughs> try right. the veal. Hey, all right. Before we try the veal, let's actually have a show. Go get this thing rolling in the first quarter. It's now time for news. Yes, news while you are out busy collecting stuff to have for a tailgate for this weekend's playoff game our shadow hawk will knows all will what do you got for us this evening well moses i'm not by nature a superstitious sort but when it comes to my favorite team i do have certain rituals certain things that uh, must be observed i think we all do to some extent or another yes it's as, as the commercial once said it's only weird if it doesn't work um <clears throat> but Pittsburgh is out of the Pittsburgh Steelers are out of the playoffs now and possibly because they did not follow one of their little rituals. I did not know this until this week, but apparently at Steelers games at the end of the third quarter, they play a highlight video montage set to the sticks song renegade boy. Um, wow. <clears throat> they didn't play that this week when the Ravens came to town and, um, According to a Steelers spokesman, it says, well, it's not always played right at the end of the third quarter. Depends on the game situation, to be honest. That's how it always has been. Well, maybe they should have played it before the fourth quarter because um, in that quarter, the Ravens fumbled. The Steelers got a touchdown. Things were going well. But on the ensuing drive, Terrell Suggs intercepted Ben Roethlisberger, and that was pretty much it. So wow. just a note just a note to the Steelers, to all teams and all fans, if you got something that you do for each game, keep doing it, except Panthers <laughs> fans. <laughs> oh, you renegade. You had it made. Do you guys have a lot of superstitions, Matt? Do you have any superstitions? Yeah, I don't. I don't tend to watch um, not divisional playoff games. But if we were in the wild card, which gladly we're not, I wouldn't have watched them because I don't know if I've told you last year as well. The only one I've ever watched was the one where we were. Um, it was the, the Falcons game, which was a, a loss by about thirteen. So uh, yeah, I, I tend not to watch wild card or playoff games if I can avoid them because um, wow. I consider I consider myself bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's 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 too bad. We we don't think you're bad luck. We think you're good luck. I also but, have. Uh, I've also got a um, 
Um, you know those green um, bracelets that they were handing out, uh, or that you were buying from the pr- uh, pro shop, not so long ago, always compete ones. Oh, I have. The worst compete thing. I've got one of those which I got on my first trip to Seattle, and that sort of is one of my sort of like stress bands, which I sit there and I get very stressed with. So I also have that as well. That's another one of my little superstitions. That's pretty good, Dustin. You got any superstitions? Uh, not really. I used to buy uh, New Jersey at the beginning of every season and uh, wear that jersey to every game the entire season. Uh, didn't do that this year though, because I ended up um, buying four jerseys last year. So decided to lay off on that a little bit. But that's about it, really. Other than that, show up tailgate or I go to a buddy's house every time to watch the away games. So I have routines more so than superstitions, I would say. That's kind of where I lay. Will, what about you? Superstitions? I've got a few. Uh, my newest one is I wore a particular shirt on Thanksgiving Day to watch the uh, 49ers uh, Seahawks game. And since we won, I have worn that shirt for every road game since, which we have also won. So, I don't know if I have a superstition. I, I, I don't think anything I do really affects the game. But, I mean, I do wear the jersey. Um, I do sit in the same spot. And I do have my little cush ball for stress. And I want to tell you a story about the cush ball. And this is, I haven't told anybody this. Okay, so this is just brand new. Um, when I lost the cush ball in the, the recliner, I literally lost it. Like I sat down, where's my ball? I couldn't find it. This was the Chiefs game. Okay. Couldn't find the, the cush ball. We lost. Um, I looked and looked, couldn't find it. Oh, no, th- I lost it when, um, yeah, I lost it during the Chiefs game. So right before the start of the next game, which I believe was the Panthers game, if I'm not mistaken. I, I uh, started Cardinals looking game. for it. Oh, it's Cardinals, Cardinals game? game? Yeah. Um, that's when they started their big run. I found my cush ball, like, just at kickoff. I found it right before kickoff. And I've had that thing in my hands every game, every second since. So it's it's going to be with me, of course, tomorrow night for sure. But uh, my cush ball, I would say, is probably the closest thing I have like that. So Did you, did you take the cush ball to the Dallas game that you went to see? I did not. Uh, what happened then, Moses? Yeah, we will be taking that with us the next time we go to a game, I think. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> it, was, it was your fault, though. It's my fault. It's for my for fault. the record, Moses, I was freezing my butt off at Arrowhead Stadium during that game, which we lost. Um, so it's my Next fault. time, please hang on to your cush ball. So a refund for you <laughs> is coming. Instead of a refund, I'll just I'll just give you this. There you go. Go Renegade, baby. They got Steelers just sitting home, baby. Okay, sorry. Uh, Will, what else you got for it? Well, I knew that was coming. Um, <clears throat> of course you did. Okay, as far as uh, next news item, you know, we've talked about Johnny Menzel uh, a lot of times <laughs> this year. and He should have know, his own segment. It, uh, it's getting to that point, and you got to feel bad. I mean, you got to feel bad for a guy when you got Skip Bayless calling him an alcoholic on the air. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> but... He just keeps making it so easy for us. Mm-hmm. Um, Manziel recently had an encounter with some hecklers at a Houston nightclub um, who were undoubtedly pointing out how uh, poorly he played during his one full start of the year. Um, Manziel reportedly flipped them the bird. They all threw their drinks on him. <laughs> <laughs> so he left the club, changed clothes, and returned. Uh, after talking to security, the troublemakers have been given the boot, but... You know, Johnny, maybe it's time to just stay away from the nightclubs altogether. Just a he, thought. He might want no, to. No, don't. Please don't. No, that's true. On the other <laughs> hand, don't. Good point. Good point. The, the young man seems to have a little bit of a problem. Just, I, I'm not going to say he's alcoholic, but, you know, I think his problem isn't alcoholism. I think his problem is stupidity. But yeah, lack of maturity. Problems. Something yeah. far worse. Extraordinary uh, video to watch, actually, watching Skip Bayless come out with this, you know, um, his critique analysis of the whole situation i don't know whether he's got inside knowledge or not but i know this much if you if you were in great britain and he turned around and said that a celebrity sportsman or you know theater star or actor or whoever had a, was an alcoholic he'd be sued he'd be sued in a matter of seconds yeah <laughs> right <laughs> you can't say you can't say stuff like that if you haven't got evidence you can't just exactly. say oh you're an alcoholic oh, it's just incredible incredible think of his draft value and everything else Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, but Skip Bayless has also last year kind of hinted that the the Seahawks were the biggest threat in the AFC. So, you know, <laughs> got that going too. with with good old Skip, you never know. No, 
No, you used to, you, that man needs to drink. He needs to drink himself out of a job. But uh, unfortunately, nice. we're stuck. Yeah, we're we're stuck with him. I always when when I see him on TV, I I always make it a big point to skip Bayless. <laughs> that's wow, that's, John. That's what I. Do. Uh, I'm gonna skip Bayless. Let's Wait, all get it. it. Let's that all sk- let's all skip Bayless when we that's can. Enough. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Somebody we'll, mute Okay. <laughs> well, well, what's your last story this evening? Well, the last my last story involves uh, the twelfth man, which is often imitated but never truly duplicated, as the Panthers are finding out to their dismay this past week. Um, mm-hmm. In an attempt to simulate the kind of noise they were going to be playing at uh, tomorrow or today, or depending on when you hear this. Um, the Panthers tried to simulate Seattle's crowd noise on Tuesday, but according to former Seahawk defensive tackle Colin Cole, it wasn't loud enough. <laughs> According <laughs> from Cole, the noise, it's very hard to duplicate. It's not something that is duplicable, which I'm not sure is a word, unless you have a dome and you're pumping noise in throughout the entire dome. The crowd noise we have is an opportunity to give guys a taste of what's going to come. But I've been there when they've been on 10 and you can't hear the person next to you talk. When asked about the effort to simulate the noise, Cam Newton said, it was good, it wasn't quite there. So <laughs> so it's up to all of us going, who are go, lucky enough to go to the game to uh, prove Cole and Newton right and blast their eardrums. I, I think so, too. I, I think especially Colin Cole, I always liked him when he was here. And I thought that was a pretty cool little quote that he's like, uh, no, you're not. No, we're not. That, that's not even try to duplicate this. This isn't going to happen. It's nice to get the respect <laughs> from the former players. It is. Well, you know, I think one of the most firing things I ever heard was from a 49er, uh, Joe Staley, when he played guard, when he played guard, which is right. He said, look, I play guard. I sit right next to the center. I couldn't hear the center. I mean, that's what he said one off season. I'll never forget him saying that. Ricardo Lockett had a pretty interesting take on it, too, because if you remember, he uh, yes. he left Seattle for a short period of time and was on San Francisco's team. And he actually came to Seattle as a San Francisco 49er and got to sit on their sidelines and kind of experience the whole thing. And he said it was just – he said there's nothing he's ever been around that duplicates it. He said it's just so loud and ridiculous that there's really nothing that you can do to prepare for it. And he's, he's glad he's on the other side of it now because it was ridiculously uncomfortable. And he said hey, the 49ers in the week leading up to the practice, that's all they were talking – or in practice leading up to the game, that's all they were talking about was how loud it is and how hard it is to play there and everything like that. So it's kind of fun to get in San Francisco's head a little bit as a fan. Yeah, and meanwhile, Bobby Wagner, I saw him on an interview this week saying, I want more. I, I want it. He, he's like, I want it to, I can't talk to my guys when we're calling signals at the line. He said, you guys need to bring it, bring it as much as you can. We love it. We love the fact that we can't hear each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought well, was I, I tell you. I tell you, Moses, as nice as it was to hear those kind words from Colin Cole and even Cam Newton admitting, okay, it's not quite there yet, part of me was hoping that they'd be just completely overconfident. It's like, oh, yeah, it's not, gonna be, yeah. it's not going to be a big deal. This is something yeah. we practice in, but oh well. Dick Del Holmes sounded off on it as well, and he was saying the same thing. And there's just, can't prepare for it. You just got to deal with it when you're there. Figure it out as you go. Yeah. Exactly. Didn't work for him. Do they? How do they? Do they signal call? They don't do what the Saints do, do they? And hold up giant, great numbers on boards and pictures. Uh, because the Saints do all their play calling with like letters and numbers and stuff, don't they? On the sideline. Yeah, I think they go the Chip Kelly route with it. Yeah, but it's um, yeah. I don't know. Every team has a different way of trying to figure out something. They got to be able to communicate. It's got to be hand signals or something. I mean, like they that. Could- if they were to replicate them, they could always have, have gone to the Saints and borrowed those ear things that the Saints had built for them oh weren't those um, fabulous yeah. those worked amazingly but well they didn't work <laughs> yeah <laughs> or they, they could take the cardinals route and just put it in the hands of ryan Lindley to win it for him oh what a funny <laughs> man <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and i think what they did was what they need to do is just learn american sign language for a week and then just have an interpreter down there i mean that, that would work <laughs> <laughs> and anyway can you hear us now i think you can Will, thank you for some wonderful news at the end of the first quarter. No problem, Moses. This is the end of the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter, bitches. We're going to take a quick station identification. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter. We're going to talk about the NFC games from last weekend. 
that got us to this weekend and the matchup that we have in Seattle against Carolina Panthers. We'll be right back right after this. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Time to musk up. Never ceases to amaze me. She gets a special cologne. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. Yep, it's made with bits of real panther. So you know it's good. It's quite pungent. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's a formidable scent. It stings the nostrils. In a good way. Yeah. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time that doesn't make sense well let's go see if we can make this little kitty purr and now it's time for the second quarter of the 12th man fan jam here to take you through the second quarter is once again our host the self-appointed reverend moses of the saint paul allen church of seahawk positivity Yes, thank you, Magic Voice of the 12th Man Fan Jam. And welcome back to the second quarter of a very special Playoff Panther edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam show. This is your self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. And I am joined by our posse this evening, which is Dustin, which is Will, and which is Matt. And we're going to take a short second quarter here and talk about the NFC Playoff games from last weekend, which is why we have the Panthers in our sights for Saturday night in Seattle. Uh, we'll talk about the first game here. The first game was Dallas and Detroit. And of course, Dallas won 24 to 20. We had some interesting things happen in that game. Uh, Dustin had Detroit winning 35 to 31. Uh, Will had Dallas winning 28 to 17. Matt had Detroit winning 27 21. Mark had uh, Dallas winning 31 20. And I had 31 24. So there are some pretty good scores there, but I have to toot my own horn on that one. I think I got pretty close. I got within seven points of Dallas and four points of Detroit. So that means I win absolutely nothing. Well done. And the kids are here, and they dig it. My kids are here. All right. Um, Dustin, thoughts about the Detroit-Dallas game? I know we're going to have to at least talk about that controversial pass interference, non-pass interference hold. (laughs) What were your thoughts on the game overall? Um, I thought it was a pretty decent game until the referees got involved too much, basically. I mean, it was, uh, I don't know. It's hard to get too invested in it, to be honest with you. But <laughs> it was it was just, I was enjoying it and thinking it, it was, I was having a good time, especially when Dallas losing. It's always fun. Yeah. But um, then once the refs started getting involved in it too much, I got... I got really annoyed. I think I said something to the effect of, uh, I wonder when the refs are going to stop with the uh, rhythmic, rhythmic gymnastics routine and start uh, letting them play football. You know, the, they have the ribbons and bows they do in rhythmic gymnastics. Just reminded me of that. <laughs> seeing the flags flying everywhere. I, I, you know, nothing ever reminds me of rhythmic gymnastics, but now it will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of how that went for me. <laughs> Well, Will, can you top that? How was the experience for you last week? Well, I, I, I got to say, I had a slightly different take on it than uh, Dustin did. It's uh, Gymnastics never really came to mind. <clears throat> but, you know, it wasn't just the uh, interference or lack thereof or the fact that the flag was picked up after the announcement was made and all that. There was just a lot of... <clears throat> there were a lot of missed calls in that game. There were some that hurt Dallas, but, you know, when the game was on the line, there were some non- calls and non-calls that helped Dallas. If you look at the the touchdown pass and then the fourth and sixth play, Dallas got away with some pretty blatant holds. Yeah. And, but, you know, if Detroit had just been able to keep their, keep their foot on the gas pedal, um, it wouldn't have come down to that. Because they had that game if they wanted it. And even before the flag started flying and the officials started screwing up that lions team was running out of gas. So if, you know, if they had pulled it off and come to Seattle, I think they would have given us a tussle for a half, but I think we would have pulled ahead in the second half because I don't think that team knows how to finish really against good competition. No, and that's what I was kind of counting on. Um, Matt, um, Mm. 
help me out here because here's my view. If if Detroit was up thirty five to seven, it, it wouldn't be an issue, right? Yeah, I mean, it, I have to say, I didn't watch the game live. I watched it, um, the sort of the highlights and stuff afterwards, because again, I wasn't really, I didn't really, as Dustin, it's difficult to get invested in games, because I was like, well, I don't care that much. I don't care which yeah. one of you comes to Seattle, if you come at all, because I just think I can beat you. What, DeMarco Murray had, what, 75 yards? 75 yards? Mm-hmm. You know, the, their, their, their masterpiece offense has got 75 yards. Um, Tony Romo, what, 293 yards, whatever it was. Um, and. I, none of it worries me. None of it worries me at all. Um, and I just love what what gets me. And this is about after the game because they were talking. You know, obviously the Dallas Cowboys have won a playoff game, so obviously they've won a Super Bowl. That's what it comes down to. And it's like, yeah, you know, we're fantastic. We're amazing. We're brilliant. Tony Romo is a is a is a quarterback god. Um, you know, Demarc Murray is like like beast mode gone crazy, and we're going to win. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm thinking, you hold on, you, you, you played the Lions. You know, it's you, you. You didn't play Green Bay. You didn't play us. You didn't play New England yet. You know, you you've just played Detroit. Um, yeah. I don't know. It got it got on my nerves a little bit. In terms of that penalty, by the way, I I mean, for me, it was the hold. I could see the hold. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm I still don't understand why old uh, Des Bryant didn't get flagged for unsportsmanlike. Still exactly. don't understand why that didn't happen. Exactly. If, if, even if even if you didn't give them any of the actual game penalties, that one, that fifteen yarder, should have been there. That's pretty yeah. obvious penalty. I don't understand why. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. Yeah. Well, what gets me is I've never somebody tell me the last time you saw them throw a flag, make the actual call, pass interference on the defense, and then time enough for the guys in the booth to say, Let's bring in Pereira to talk about it. He starts talking and then they picked it up. I've never seen that before in my life. Yeah, me I neither. Mean, they'll have a conference to pick it up, okay. But they made the call and then picked it up well after he called it. I've never yeah. seen that. Well, Moses, I got to say, I mean, it, it obviously gives father, fodder to all the conspiracy fit theories out there. Yeah. And it's, pretty bad. it's pretty bad when the NFL's best defense is, oh, no, 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 no. We're not corrupt. We're just incompetent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's bad. The I worst could. thing about it was the no explanation. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no explanation. If they would have said, you know, this was going on, this was going on. This is why it's not a penalty. This is why you're picking up the flag. That's one thing. But they just picked it up, didn't say nothing, and just or anything, and just went on yeah. with the game, pretending it didn't happen. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would like to see my coach get a little bit more animated. Now Caldwell is pretty much like a a mannequin out there. I understand that he is kind of a mannequin, but I would like to see man. I like to see my coach get a little bit more upset than he was. I don't know. Well, the thing is, is the coaches don't get upset about refereeing anymore, do they? They're not literally no. allowed to. If they do, they get no. fined. If they do, they yeah. get you know they get looked down upon. So True. you can't sit there and say that actually it was a really poor call, badly taken, no explanation, bad refereeing. You shouldn't have broken up all of the refereeing groups that you've had throughout the year and just to make some right. sort of all yes, star. Thank you. All star pro pensioners. I mean, that's what we've got essentially. Let's get all star <laughs> pro pensioners to stand there and referee games who have never worked together for the whole season. Well, that's yeah. of course that's going to lead to you know errors and mistakes. So why do it? Exactly. Exactly. Well, let's put that craziness behind us like we will um, with Golden Tate. And we'll move on to the next game, which, of course, was the important game for us. Carolina and Arizona, in all likelihood, the winner of this game was going to come to Seattle, and it did. Uh, Carolina wins 27-16. to Dustin had 17-14. Uh, will had 17-6. to uh, Matt had 16-14. Mark had 20 to 13 and I had 24 14. Again, I'm pretty close there. I, I had 24 14 yeah. and 27 16. I, you know, pretty, pretty good there. So I, again, not that anyone cares, but, you know. Yay! I'll toot that hard. Yay. Let's toot it. Um, Will, your thoughts on the Carolina Arizona game? Anything you see scare you or, or what were your thoughts <laughs> of that game? Oh, I was scared, all right, but not because we would have had to play one of those teams. I was, that was just some. That was just some horrible football. Yes. That was awful. And I mean, you know, not just Arizona's offense, which was abysmal, but you know, you're looking at Cam Newton. He's throwing off his back foot half the time. Oh. He's making all these bad, bad throws, which you know bodes well for us for tomorrow. But still, mm-hmm. it's just. These guys are playoff te- and they want to expand the playoffs. They want more teams uh, on that level in the playoffs. Please no. 
I, I agree. Uh, Matt, are you okay with them hosting a playoff game? Because I sure was. Because they won the division. Look, we've we've been there, so yeah. I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and 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 have a you know have a discussion about that. We were there. We were there in 2010. Let's not let's not you know fool ourselves we had a pretty crappy season and we ended mm-hmm. up there as well so no that's the rules the rules are the rules it doesn't yeah. matter whether or not you win none or win some if you if you win the division you get a game that's the way it right works. so i get that i understand that but my god what an awful game of football yeah it was. what a thoroughly disgusting exhibition of how you know to play a game of football just awful Awful. It was it was terrible, but you know, for me, if they're gonna if they're going to say, well, they don't get deserve it because they have to win so many games, then get rid of the divisions um, because there's no reason yeah, to have them. Absolutely, you can't. The thing is, it's just because <clears throat> oh no, someone's got a losing record, they shouldn't ever play. We were there. We we did it. it happened to us. Yeah, so, they did what they had to do to win a division. Yeah, absolutely, it's so all they had to do. Yeah, and if you're 14 and two in a wild card, you didn't do what you had to do to win your division. I'm sorry, it's that simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, John Clayton makes a good point on that, is if you take away the home game for the division winner, you are uh, rewarding teams that come from uh, you know, divisions like the AFC North that had weak schedules because they played the uh, AFC South and uh, the NFC South, and that inflated their records as a result. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I think it needs to stay with the division leaders uh, hosting, yeah. the, hosting the game. If you won your division, you should get a home game. I agree. I agree. Dustin, what are your thoughts on this wonderful Carolina-Arizona game we had last weekend? I think just going into it, it was set up for failure in the first place with that quarterback play from Arizona, which you knew we were going to see against that uh, Carolina defense, and vice versa. You know, I mean, Cam Newton has been um, wildly inconsistent for mm-hmm. most of his career, and like uh, Will was saying, fundamentally, he wasn't there. He was kind of throwing kind of strange off his back foot and just not following through with his throws. And he, I don't know where he was at mentally, but he wasn't in that game mentally. Cause if he was, no. they'd have been able to do a lot more than they did. And absolutely. And as, as, as much as they like to crow about holding Arizona to 70 yards, Arizona was still in that game in the fourth quarter with 70 yards. And that's pretty pathetic in my eyes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yep. So um, speaking of that, uh, Arizona's performance by Ryan Lindley. My word. Woo! Anyway, I'm drafting him for fantasy next year. Yeah, He's really good. I, you know, I, fantasy something. And, you know, anyway, I think reality isn't good enough for him. He's going to have to go to fantasy. But anyway, that brings us to our two-minute warning. Holy sh! it's a two-minute warning. And in this edition of our two-minute warning, before we go to halftime for our very special halftime trivia, the return of 12th Man Fan Jam halftime trivia, we're going to close the first half out with a return of one of our favorite pieces called Headlines and Punchlines. (laughs) Yes, Headlines and Punchlines. We take a headline from the NFL and we add our own punchlines to it. Fun and joy had by all. The headline and punchline for this week is the following. The Cardinals' offense was so bad last week, and that's what we're going to go with. Now, I have a, a, a couple here, and I know that Matt has a couple, and I know Will has a couple. So uh, we'll kind of do a little roundabout here. I'll, I'll do one, then Will do one, and then Matt will do one, and we'll we'll go until we're done. Okay, are we ready, guys? Yep. yep. All right, here we go. I will start. Um, no, yes, I will start. The Cardinal offense was so bad last week, the play of Ryan Lindley made Cardinal fans yearn for the Kevin Cobb era. Ouch. Kevin Cobb, everybody. You never thought you'd hear that on the show. Kevin Cobb, everyone. All right, Will, here you go. Cardinal's offense was so bad last week. FSU quarterback Jameis Winston now only has the second worst flop of 2015. (laughs) That was a beauty, too. <laughs> mm. Beauty flop. Matt. Yes. Cardinal, Cardinal offense was so bad last week. Arizona phoned Cleveland to see if Johnny Football was available. <laughs> and he was out drinking, so, you know. Cardinal offense was so bad last week, Cardinal fans suddenly realized, I guess it can get worse after Matt <laughs> Leinert. <laughs> Matt Leinert reference, everybody. All right. Um, Will. Cardinal offense was so bad last week. 
ESPN was asking North Korea, North Korea to demand that the broadcast be censured in an attempt to generate interest. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we got a winner. After this. I think we got a winner. Um, Matt, Cardinal yeah. offense was so bad last week. I could have played defense and they still wouldn't have scored. <laughs> oh. Matt Matt plays left out, I think, on football, don't you, Matt? You play left out. Center. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, last round, the Cardinals offense was so bad last week, Larry Fitzgerald applied for his old job as water boy for the Vikings to get away from embarrassment. <laughs> That's bad. Well, the Cardinal offense was so bad last week. Instead of charging people to sign autographs for them, Ryan Lindley now has to pay money to sign autographs. <laughs> and finally, Matt, take us home. I haven't Cardinal got any more. You haven't got any more <laughs> to take us two. home? I got two. I, I, okay, I got one more then. You go, you go. The Cardinal offense was so bad last week, Stoney Case called for a reassignment to get his job back. <laughs> if you don't know who Stoney Case is. Ravens quarterback, right? Ravens. He, he is like one of the best names. I said if the Flintstones ever had a football team, their quarterback <laughs> should be Stoney Case. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I get the Flintstone, and Stoney Case should be their quarterback. And that's the end of the second quarter. Holy sh! it's halftime! Look up the Flintstones, kids. We're going to halftime. We're going to take a quick station identification, and when we come back, it is the return of the special halftime trivia show. So you're going to want to play along with that as well. We'll be right back after this. Hey, this is Matt, all the way from Merry Old England, and you're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam. Yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of the best play-along Seahawks theme trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia with your host... The self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to a very special Panther Playoff Edition of the 12th Man Fan Jam Trivia Show. A trivia game that tests your knowledge of both our posse and our listeners. Let's meet the contestants, shall we? Yes, first... We got to shut the band up. All right, sorry. First, we have... In the non-champion corner. In the red corner. In the red corner. You'll be in the red corner, Will. In the red corner from Washington. He's a winner. And it takes it all, baby. Sammy Hagar. Right from over the top. He is Shadowhawk Will. Say hi, Will. Woo! <laughs> what the Rick heck Flair with it. You want Ric Flair on us? Yeah. It's pretty cool. And of course, from Merry Old England. He's won this a couple times. This is the Sex Pistols. Okay? The Sex Pistols. From Merry Old England. He is Matt. I'm Matt. Telly ho! God save the Queen, Matt. God save the Queen. We mean it, man. Hip, God hip. Save the queen. She's how can you not love the Sex Pistols? And finally, also from the state of Washington, he is Dustin. Hey, hi, Dustin. Here you guys. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you how the trivia game works. There will be two rounds of questions. Each contestant will answer one question each round. If they get it correct, they get a point. After two rounds of questions, there will be a final trivia question worth two points. And if there's a tie, then the tied players will go to a special secret overtime question where the winner indeed will take it all. The questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen. So you, the viewer, and the listener can play along well if you wish. You can go ahead and play along. It's fun. If you do, let us know how you did on the questions. Uh, Again, please, there are three simple rules. No Googling. No, no Googling, no phone a friend, 
especially Matt, because it's four in the morning, and please, no wagering. However, earlier today, my two charming Seahawk fan children, Mosette and Little Mo, Mosette is the voice of the 12th Man Fan Jam as she takes us from quarter to quarter, they did take the quiz. So, once per round, or I guess once per two rounds, uh, you gentlemen can ask, hear what the kids answered. And you can ask that once during the entire show. So first round, second round, you get one shot at this. If you'd like to know what the kids answered, you can ask what they answered. Of course, obviously, I'm not going to tell you if it's right or not. So uh, we have no defending champion because Mark, who is on assignment, is not here with us. So we will go ahead and and go with Dustin because I probably insulted him the most in the intro. So (laughs) Dustin. Yeah, sounds fair. Yeah, yeah, one, two, three, or four, Dustin. I'll go one. Dustin's going to go one, and then uh, we're going to go with Will. Two, three, or four? I'll go with three. Will will go with three, and Matt, who are you going with? Two or four? Four, please. Four. All right, here we go. I remind you guys, no wagering. And here is your first question. Are you are you are you ready? Oh, mm-hmm. I'm ready. Dustin, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Are you sure you're ready? Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question one. Get ready. How are many? <laughs> question one, Dustin. How many NFL championships have the Carolina Panthers played in? Have they played in two NFC championships, three NFC championships, or four NFC championships? Hey, Dustin. Uh-oh. Here's some Morgan for you, buddy. I'm going to say two. I know they went to the Super Bowl with Jake go home, and I know they played in Seattle and lost. You know, little, game. little little Mo said, said said two also, if just in case you want to know. But, oh, I'm hmm. sorry. No, the answer is three. They've been in three NFC championships, believe it or not. Those jerks. Three. Yeah, I know. So, Dustin gets no points for that, but we will go on to Will. Will, your question is this. What NFC team have the Carolina Panthers never lost to in the playoffs? Who have they never lost to? The Cowboys, the Cardinals, or the Packers? Oh, Will, there's some Morgan for you, buddy. What NFC team have the Carolina Panthers never lost to in the playoffs? Cowboys, Cardinals, Packers. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Cowboys. Cowboys. Kids said the Packers. You're right! Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. They've never lost the Cowboys. I think they've beaten them twice, actually. All right, so Will gets a point, and now we're at Matt. Hello. Hi, Matt. Hi. Uh, Matt, mm. in 12 playoff games, the Panthers have been in 12 playoff games. Hard to believe, but it's. In 12 playoff games, how many times did the Panthers give up more than 20 points? Was it five times, six times, or seven times? Hey, Matt, here's some organ. Woohoo! Give me the organ. <laughs> five, six, or seven times that the Carolina um, Panthers gave 20 points or more. Six times. He says six. Correct answer. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. The correct answer is seven. Oh. So. At the end of the first round, everyone, we have Will with a point, and we have Dustin and Matt in a demo off at zero. So, <laughs> we're going to start the second round, and the topic changes from the Carolina Panthers. So, Will, you get to pick five, six, seven, or eight. I'll go with five. Will goes with five. And we will go with Dustin at six, seven, or eight. Uh, seven. Seven. And Matt, uh, six or eight? Eight, please. Yay. All right. By the way, uh, I know it was mentioned once on this show. These guys have no idea what these questions are going to be. A clue. <laughs> so if you haven't figured it out, I mean, you just listen to the show. You can tell. All right. Uh, Will has a point, and he starts off. <clears throat> Will, here's your question. What did Cat Stevens change his name to? <laughs> What? <laughs> what did Cat Stevens, the singer, change his name to? Is it is he now known as Yusuf Islam? Is he known as Muhammad Yusuf? Or is he known as Ali Muhammad? 
Yusuf Islam. Oh, you wow. Win. Somebody's a fan. I knew that. So. And guess what? He's right. It's I wouldn't say fan exactly, but I know who the bastard <laughs> is. Oh, baby, it's a wild world. And Will is up two to nil, as they like to say in England. Dustin, <laughs> here's your yes. question. Yay. The largest cat in the world is a 922-pound cat named Wow. Boys. Yeah. He's a big son of a gun. But what is he? A is liger. He a- is he a lion, a tiger, or a liger? I'm going to show you some more of it anyway! <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, yeah, yeah, all right. He's a damn liger. I was going to guess okay. my sister-in-law's cat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've seen one of those things in person, and they are enormous. They had one up at Cattails in Spokane. And this one's big. They're, yeah, they're huge, man. Gary looking. Pounds. You'd like to have that thing on your lap. Okay. That's what she said. All right. Matt, this is maybe my favorite question, so I'm so glad you got this one. Oh, <clears> Christ. <throat> what on college in. did... What college did the cat... Pantro no. from Thundercats go to. All right. Oh, see? It was on Pondera. <laughs> we did that, that last time. We I had the other well. trivia. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a Panther question. When... <laughs> I love this question. Oh, so much. I want to marry this question. Okay. Here you go, Matt. When yeah. Cindy Brady, when Cindy Brady of the Brady Bunch, oh, accused, <laughs> yeah, accused Bobby Brady of stealing her doll. What's the name of the doll? Is it the what? Kitty Cares a Lot doll, the Kitty Carry a Lot doll, or the Kitty Carry All doll? What's the name of Cindy Brady's doll on the Brady Bunch? Kitty Cares a Lot, Kitty Carry a Lot, or Kitty Carry All? It's it's the Kitty Carry All doll. And why would you say that? Carry all. Pretty sure? Yeah. You know, Mosette said that too. Am I wrong? And you're wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> carry all. Well, isn't this interesting? Because everyone got a point on the last round. And those are supposed to be the difficult questions. So, at the end of our regulation, Will's in first with two points. Dustin is a point, and Matt is a point. But the final question is worth two points. So we could very well have a champion crowned right after this question. So, final question is, as usual, a numbers game. And we will go in order. Uh, We will go Will, Dustin, and – or actually, we will go – sorry, Matt, Dustin, and Will and to decide the champion. Here we go. Your question is this, Matt. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. The last time the Panthers played in Seattle was 2010. They lost 31 to 14. How many total yards did the Panthers have on offense? <laughs> oh, God. The Oregon's going to help you, my friend. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, man. Pick a number. Do it. Um, um, well, um, what, what would I think? Um, I would say something like uh, 210. <laughs> Two hundred ten, says Matt. Yeah, I ain't got a clue. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Justin, what do you got? Uh, three twenty-seven. Woo! Everybody's going crazy. By the way, <laughs> the closest without going over wins, and if everybody's over, then um, the closest. The house wins. wins. Yeah, house wins. Will two ten three twenty-seven. What are you going with? I'll try one seventy-nine. <laughs> one seventy-nine. So That's we the have, equivalent of the one dollar bid. We have two ten. We have three twenty seven. We have one seventy nine. Very interesting. Nobody, nobody tonight went went prices right on us like they normally do. That's true. Which is interesting, but that's okay. Um, I will tell you that in two thousand ten, when the Panthers played Seattle and lost thirty one to fourteen, the total yards of offense the Panthers had was two hundred eighty three. That means that Matt once again. <laughs> The Englishman, the guy in Europe, takes the trophy again in 12-man halftime trivia. Congratulations, Matt. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing, amazing half show. What an amazing show this was of halftime trivia. We hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed playing halftime trivia. I enjoyed the organ. We enjoyed everything. What a great show this has been. 
We'll be right back to start the second half after this station identification. And we're going to talk about some playoff football. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little kitty, warm kitty, happy ball of fun. kitty, happy kitty, sleepy kitty, It's the third quarter, bitches. <laughs> Yes, welcome to a very special Panther Playoff Edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam. Presidents of the United States of America, I believe they're a Seattle band, are they not, Dustin? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. A little song called Kitty. Gotta dig it. It's good stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and stop there before we get in too much trouble. Uh, we're going to talk about this upcoming playoff game between the Panthers and the Seahawks. And we're going to start with Dustin. Dustin, as you look at this Panther team as they come into Seattle Saturday night, what is a key for the Panthers? Because the Panthers are double-digit um, underdogs here. Um, yeah. let, give them give them some way to win this game. How do the Panthers win in Seattle? Uh, forcing turnovers on our side of the field because that's the only way they're going to get in the scoring position, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's that's something that has to be key for them. It has to be something stupid, a fumble from Marshawn or Russell getting hit from behind and fumbling there, uh, you know, on our half of the field. So other than that, I don't think they're going to drive 80 yards down the field on us at all and score, not even field goal range. I don't think Cam Newton's consistent enough to deal with uh, our secondary. I know that our, um, our games within the last three years have been battles and they've been low scoring games, but all those games were over in Carolina. And we all know that, uh, West Coast teams traditionally don't travel well to the East Coast and perform well. We mm-hmm. perform well enough to win, but now uh, things are reversed, and they have to come over here, travel cross country, play in our house, a place where we've been dominant um, for the last few years, and deal with something that Cam Newton's never had to deal with before in the 12th man. Yes. So, the only way I see them doing anything remotely close to winning this game is getting those turnovers or having some kind of weird fluky plays here and there because it's not going to be good football that wins the form if they win. It's going to be some kind of dumb luck, honestly. So dumb luck. All right. Well, I don't think you're alone in that thought. Uh, Matt, what are your thoughts on this Carolina team and, and their chances of winning in Seattle Saturday night? We're entirely with what Dustin's just said. You're taking the team that we played in week eight and placing them in the middle of hell. I mean, that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're used to having their own way. They're used to having their own turf. You know that wonderful sunshine that we see down there. You ain't gonna get that this time. Ain't gonna happen this time. Um, I'm, I, nothing scares me about this team apart from the fact that I and I'll come to the prognostications, I suppose, in a little while. But mm-hmm. what I, I can certainly see them starting quick because we don't start very quick. You know, we've always I've mm-hmm. said that a couple of times already this year, this season. Um, you know, the first quarter will be an ugly one. I wouldn't be surprised if the first quarter in this one's a bit ugly as well, to be fair. Um, but that won't last. And um, no, I don't think there's anything they can do to win, to be honest. I don't. I don't see it. Okay. All right. Well, on top of this, they lost their one of their, uh, I think, is a real force in the inside on defense, Starla Tula. They, um, what kind of impact is that going to have on this game? Well, it's going to be a big impact. I mean, Latule hasn't had lived up to his promise of his rookie year, but he's been a pretty key contributor for him. They lose a big body in the middle of the line. Uh, they lose somebody who can get after the quarterback uh, from the interior, which, you know, when you're facing a guy like Russell Wilson, getting the interior pressure is really big. Uh, so that's going to, you know, they whatever chance they had of winning took a big blow when uh, Latule went out. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I, I, I remember the first Carolina game when the Seahawks went up 13-9. And, and the look on Cam Newton's face, I, I knew the game was over. Because he just didn't have that, you know, I looked at our guy when we were down, what was it, 9-6, to six, I guess, at the time. And, you know, our guy was talking to the guys and pumping them up, I mean, Russell Wilson. And he goes out there and leads our team down to the go-ahead score. And honestly, Cam Newton looked like he was beaten before he went out on the field. 
and after that. And I thought, wow, that, that dude has no confidence that he's going to be able to bring this team back. I turned to my son and said, this game's over. Cam Newton doesn't even look like he wants to go out there. And sure enough, what happened? Sack, sack, incomplete, fourth and a million, and they go for it and didn't get it. Um, I, I just felt like Cam Newton – look, Cam Newton's a good quarterback. I, he's certainly, in my opinion, he's certainly better than a lot of quarterbacks out there. Don't get me wrong. Uh, to me, they win this game if they get a lot of third and threes. If they get a lot of third and threes, then that's trouble for us because that's when Cam's going to get those five or six yards and be able to to move with his feet. And he can throw the ball. He's no Kaepernick. He's, to me, he's a lot better than Kaepernick. But I just don't think the kid has what he needs to go into a hostile environment. And that's an understatement. Going to Seattle on a Saturday night, national crowd, playoff game, and be able to drive down the field and get the winning score. And I just don't see that happening. I don't see him having that. And on the other side, the way I look at this game, guys, and you can agree or disagree, we, we talk about how great this team could be, the Seattle team. If they are going to be considered as great as they think they are or we think they are, the Patriots are the last major dynasty from a few years ago. When the Patriots were in the playoffs and they played a team like this, it was basically, get out of our way. We don't have time for you. Get out of our way. We're going to the Super Bowl. And that's what this has to be to me. I don't want Seahawks to win this game. I want them to just toss the Panthers aside like they don't mean anything. Excuse me. You have no weight in this. Get out of our way. We have bigger fish to fry. That's what I want to see from the Seahawks team on Saturday night. So Yeah. I don't think you'll see that, though. No, and but... I, I, we may not. Because we we always seem to play that really sort of you know grind them down, yeah. you, know, uh, you know defense grinder type play, which I mean, is great, it's fantastic. It's not what the NFL wants to see. Obviously, they want to see right. all the big plays, but I don't think they'll see that. Um, but I think I think it's going to be a complete game, though. I don't I don't think we're going to have. I mean, the only thing I don't know who's refing it. Do we know? Do you know who the refs are? Uh, Terry McCauley, head, I don't. Terry McCauley. He's the guy who refed our game against the Saints last year, as well as Super Bowl Forty Eight. Oh, I like him. I like him. I okay, so. cool. So, I mean, but the only thing we've got to look after ourselves, if we always say, is is was we don't. We only had a couple of penalties the other week. Mm-hmm. Stick to that sort of plan. Try and try and keep it a clean game, because the last thing we want to do is give him his third and threes yes. on five on five yard penalties. Yes, and and please, Michael Bennett, please look at where you're lining up, and, and don't do it twice <laughs> in a row. That's, wow. Um, okay, well. We've talked about what the Carolina Panthers could do to win this game. What what do the Seahawks do to win this game? Oh, I don't think they have to do anything too big. Just play their game. I mean, they need to run the ball, and, you know, I think that's going to be the way it's been all season where it's tough getting yardage at first, but then we wear them down. Um, We've got to force a couple turnovers on defense, and we just need to avoid making mistakes of our own. If we play our brand of football – this Carolina Panthers team does not have enough to beat us. I agree with you there. Uh, Dustin, what are your thoughts? I think uh, for Seattle to win this game, they're probably going to have to find an excuse for Lynch not to play the first couple series because that formula works. <laughs> <laughs> Skittle poisoning. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and no, that may uh, very well happen. Yeah. But no, I think um, yeah, it's, it, if they show up and play the way they're supposed to and the way they normally prepare to, there's nothing Carolina can do about it. It's a, I know Matt was thinking that they, they start slow and all that, but this is a little bit different. It's the playoffs, and it's a primetime game. They they shine in primetime games. I think Seahawks are going to roll the uh, motion just from the get-go, from everything going on, and everybody in the building, the vibe, the energy, everything is just going to be a tidal wave that Carolina Panthers aren't going to be able to deal with. I, I just don't see them being able to do anything, and Seattle's just going to roll. Matt, give us a, a way the Seahawks win this game. I think they win this game by controlling defense. I think that's where they win this game. They control Cam Newton. You take Cam Newton out of the game, that's it. Um, yeah. You know, they haven't got anything else. I mean, Greg Olson, yep, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, you know, it's it, everything comes back to Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. So I think what Jonathan Stewart's on, is he playing? I don't know. But, I mean, no, he's playing. Yeah. He's yeah. playing. I mean, I, I, th- I think, you know, obviously they have got that threat there as well, but. It's Cam Newton. You've got to you've got to control his ability to run. You've got to control his ability to throw. And it comes back to defense. It's what it comes back to. Do our offense really? Is our offense going to put up star you know star spangled numbers? 
I don't think they will, but we'll see. I'm hoping they do. It'd be, it'd be fantastic if we close them down on defense and destroyed them on offense as well, because then that will send shockwaves through the entire NFL. That actually we we've got a complete, you know, a complete two units. See, I don't think it will. I think I'll just say, oh well, they just beat up on a really bad team that shouldn't have been in the playoffs. Yeah, they'll that's find an they'll excuse say. to say. Yeah, yeah, they'll find an excuse not to give us any credit. Yeah, of course. And that's fine. And I have a problem with that. They, you know, credit doesn't win games, so I don't care what they say. Um, and and speaking of not caring what they say. I think it's time to say that's the end of the third quarter. It's the end of the third quarter, bitches. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) We don't care, but it's the end of the third quarter. We're going to take a quick station identification. We'll be back with our predictions, our prognostications, our game balls for the Seahawk playoff game against the Carolina Panthers right after this station. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam. On the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. It's tough love. Just like my Mitchell Kitty. When he's bad, I say, the guy's a bad Mitchell Kitty. And I smack him on the head. And now, it's time for the fourth quarter of the 12th Man Fan Jam. Here to lead us through the final quarter is once again our host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk. Positivity. Yes, thank you, Magic Voice of the 12th Man Fan Jam. Welcome back to the fourth and final quarter of a very special Playoff Panther edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam show. We want to remind you that you can join us on Facebook at the 12th Man Fan Jam show uh, Facebook group. You can also email us at 12th Man Fan Jam at gmail.com. We look forward to that. We hope you enjoy the very entertaining halftime trivia show uh, that saw Matt once again ascend himself <laughs> to the champion spot. Uh, he, he, he did come from behind, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I, yes! I, I had to do it! <laughs> I had to do it. All right. Uh, so we're going to start with our, predictions, our <laughs> our predictions, our prognostications, and our game balls now. <laughs> and we're going to start with Will while, while Matt gets himself under control. Um, hi, Will. Why do I always have to follow up the crazy stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we want a prediction, we want a prognostication, and we want a game ball for this playoff game, playoff game, between playoff. your Seahawks and the Panthers. What do you got? Well, my prediction is that Seattle is going to win this game 24-13. to 13. Okay. My prognostication is that Michael Bennett is going to get at least two sacks and either force or recover a fumble. And I'm going to give him my game ball because he's been playing pretty well the last few weeks, and I think he's going to really step up on the national stage tomorrow night and show everybody why they should be jealous that we re-signed him this year. Ah, yes. Made the comment about, what was it, the cute cousin or something? I didn't really get that. Yeah, that's that's Michael Bennett being Michael Bennett. But, of you know, he is who he is. He, he is who he is. That's the truth. Uh, very entertaining. Speaking of very entertaining, hi, Dustin. Hello. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, I look forward to hearing from your uh, tailgate experiences tomorrow. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It'll definitely be a lot of fun. And yeah. It'll be a long one, so it's going to it, be awesome. It will. It sure will. Uh, Marathon tailgating. Uh, fantastic. Uh, you need a score, a prognostication, and a game ball, please. All right. I think uh, Seattle's going to roll them, like I said earlier. I think it's probably going to be something like... I'll call it 28-6 or 27-6. And then uh, and then as far as um, prognostications go, I think Earl Thomas is going to get his uh, first pick six of the, uh, of the year. I nice. can see that happening for sure. And uh, nice. player, player of the game, I'm going to say, is going to be her game ball. I'm going to say is uh, I think I'm going to go the other safety with it being Cam, and I think he's going to set the tone early, and he's going to set the tone often. As he often does, you know, mm-hmm. and he's always like, you know, I called him the – I called him – he should be the best man, not the bridesmaid. Bridesmaid. I, <laughs> yeah, right. I called him the bridesmaid the other night. <laughs> I laughed at him. He's he's always seems to be the best man. He never is quite the guy that you give the credit to, but he's like in the discussion. He's like the second or third guy, but he's never the guy. So, um, Matt from mm. Merry Old England, mm. always great to hear from you, my friend. Nice to be here. Yes. Um, what do you got for score wise and prognostication, all that fun stuff? I think Seattle will win this game seventeen to ten. Ooh. Um. 
evil, horrible, ugly first quarter, as per standard. Um, <laughs> get it sorted, though. That'll be fine. Um, I think uh, Brian Walters will run it back for a six. There you go. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brian Walters' experience. <laughs> oh, my God. We now you're just had... trolling, man. No, I'm he putting out there. experience. I'm putting it out there for, for Tom, bless him. So I'm putting oh, it out there. There yes. we go. I'm showing the faith for Tom. Uh, Brian Walters will, will do it for Dustin. Dustin will not be able to deal with it at all. Um, <laughs> his his head, head will explode. explode. Yeah. I don't think I'll be able to deal with it. <laughs> He literally will. I mean, he just won't. Be, well, he won't be able to see it, obviously, because he, he will fall off his box, which he stands on to be able to see um, into the stadium. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Um, and uh, so I'm going to give my game ball to Brian Walters. There you go. Wow! Oh wow! That's <laughs> wonderful. Oh, that uh, is you so know, awesome. uh, well, you know, we were accused of not having faith. We were accused of not saying to the top ten. So there know, it is. Return. There it is. I'm given. I'm given the faith. My God, there it is. Um, uh, Mark could not be here this evening. Uh, part of our our posse from California, but Mark did send me his information, and he said uh, twenty seven thirteen Seattle. Uh, game ball to Russell Wilson, and his prognostication is three interceptions for Cam Newton. So I kind of wow. like that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I, I'm going to go with a weird score. And the reason I'm going with a weird score is because every time these people, these two teams get together, it's a weird score. 16-12, 13-9, you know, what, 12-7. It's just, they're just bizarre scores. So I'm going 36 to 15. Don't ask me how they get that. I'm just going 36 <laughs> to 15. How do they get that, Moses? I have no idea. And I think when it gets down to it, I think that um, it, Cam is going to start forcing stuff. And, you know, that, that receiver they have, that young kid, is it Benjamin? Is that his name? Calvin Benjamin. Yes. Calvin Benjamin. He played very well against us. I, I, I don't think he's going to play that well against us, you know, Saturday night. But he did play pretty well against us. So I think Cam's going to panic when they fall behind and start forcing stuff. And I think he's going to force one to Benjamin. And I, and I think Sherman's going to pick six. And uh, that's, all, that's all the rest of the NFL world wants to see is Sherman running back a touchdown. But that's what I want to see. So... <laughs> My prognostication is Sherman to pick six, and, and and my game ball is is going to go to Marshawn Lynch. I think that he's going to just absolutely just end it like he always does. He seems to be the closer on this team if you're a baseball fan, and I think he is going to close this game, and I think he's going to have a, a very, very good, good end running. The second half, he's going to run the ball very effectively. They're going to be tired, and I think he's going to close this game out. Speaking of closing out, my goodness, it looks like it's time to bring another wonderful and amazing 12th Man Fan Jam to a sad and really sad close. We we are so glad you decided to waste some time with us. It was, as usual, a show that raised the bar here at the Seahawk Positivity channel. And we certainly hope you laughed a little and maybe just maybe you learned a little something along the way. What did we learn this evening? Well, we learned on this show it's only weird if it doesn't work. We learned the Steelers need sticks to be successful. And we learned that it's okay for everyone to skip Bayless. So, <laughs> on behalf of Dustin, on behalf of our news hound, Shadowhawk Will, my partner in crime from Merry Old England, Matt, this is your self appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity saying, enjoy that playoff game. And as always, go Hawks! Go Hawks. Yeah. Thanks for asking.